Online MBA programs are gaining traction and they are paying off. Here's one example. 70% of the students getting their MBA at the Jack Welch Management Institute have been promoted and or received a raise. Joining us right now, Andrea Bachman, who is the dean of the Jack Welch Management Institute at Strayer. Also, our guest host today, Jack Welch himself. Andrea, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So, so you have a, a unique mission, should we say, to rid Indeed. the world of bad managers. <laughs> yes. How do you do that? We are... Every, for our students, the most important thing that we teach them is to learn on Monday, apply on Tuesday, and bring it back on Friday. If they're not doing that, if they're not seeing change immediately inside of their own workplace, then the investment isn't worth it for them. So the 70% of people that you mentioned who are experiencing promotions right away mm -hmm. are doing just that. That's why it's happening for them. Let's talk about the program itself. It is growing pretty rapidly. It is. How, how big is it right now? We have 650 students, expect to have over 800 by the end of the year, which makes us one of the fastest growing MBA programs internationally. Uh, the online programs, I, I have been amazed because I, I have to admit I was a skeptic just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I have been amazed by what they can do and why they are so important to people. I think probably the biggest reason is you can have people who are still working who find time to do these programs at, at night or in between whenever they can get together and do these things and they can really do things that you would never be able to do before. That's right. I mean, I think for our students, one of the things that we are experiencing and one of the things we really expect to have happen is that they are changing the, their careers that they're currently in. So they take the learning and they apply it in their current careers. Most of our students want to have career advancement. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that they can work, they can build networks of other students who are working professionals. Our students look, they're 37 for the most part. That's the average age. 15 years of professional work experience. They're bringing really rich ideas and experiences into the classroom with them. Uh, one of the challenges, though, with online programs is how do you actually have that personal touch with students? How do you develop yeah. a personal program for them? Yeah. It's, it's a really good question, and it is a challenge, for sure. Mm. It's a challenge for all of us who are in this space. We mm. have, our faculty care so deeply about our students, and on the way in, we tell our faculty, look, if you just want to be an expert, there's plenty of places where you can go and work. This isn't the place for you. Be expert and coach. So the faculty have a big role in ensuring that students feel like they're actually a part of a community. Um, but the other piece is that we do think, Jack, I mean, nobody else can say they have Jack, right, <laughs> inside their program. Um, but Jack does quarterly Q&As with our students. I do video conferences with our students. Our faculty do video conferences with our students. It is as real as it can be being an online program. Jack, what kind of questions do you get from the students when you do the Q&As? A lot of them about careers. I'm stuck in this situation. My boss is this and that. I, uh, what can I do about that situation? I'm not getting enough resources in my area. How, how would you take this project that I've got that's so good and take it forward? So all kinds of practical stuff relating yeah. to generally their careers. Um, most of my Q&As end up being their careers, not the curriculum. And this is probably a lot more curriculum-oriented. Mine's career-oriented. Yeah, but it's not theoretical stuff. It is stuff oh, that they're trying to figure out every me? day. And the biggest thing Andrea said here is that the faculty... His job is to please the students. These students are 37 years old on average. They're spending their money, and they're, and they're mature adults. And if these teachers aren't delivering, well, I'll let you tell Yeah, me. no, I mean, I, you know, one of the things I always hear Jack talk about is differentiation. And one of the things we pride ourselves on is if we're going to teach it, we better practice it. So inside of our classrooms, we differentiate our faculty. As I said, we have a really high-performing faculty right now, but that didn't come easy. Uh, wait, when you say you differentiate, how do you do that? Uh, we have metrics we use to study how well faculty are performing inside the classroom. And the bottom 10 percent, uh, especially those who are students, are telling us this is a terrible experience. We don't have that happening very much anymore, by the way. You're kidding. Um, like Six Sigma? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we pitch them out. A, a, a professor has to please tell them about the, uh, the um, NPS scores. Yeah, so, I mean, this is one of the differentiators for sure for JWMI is um, we are right now, our student satisfaction scores are in line with companies like Amazon and Southwest. It's, it's unbelievable. And that, that is because we listen constantly. We ask for their feedback, and the entire JWMI team, including the faculty, comes up with action plans to change the experience for students every term, all the time. Higher education has been a place where you have not seen change. It's probably <laughs> one of the last places that you will ever see change mm -hmm. that has come through. 
true, but it seems like we're reaching a tipping point. When you start looking even at undergraduate education, mm -hmm. where it's 25,000, sometimes 50,000 and more if you're looking at a private institution a year, that's unsustainable, that kind of growth in tuition, and that's why I think you see a pushback. Agreed. I, I, I've been really amazed just over the last few years at how you come back with that. I know the online component is part of that. I know MOOCs, those online, massive online courses, that's all part of it. Um, yeah, I'd like to make a comment about MOOCs, I think, yeah. just because uh, mm -hmm. I, I love the experimentation, right? So there has been movement, there's been experimentation. And for people who don't know that, MOOCs are those massive online courses. You have one professor Correct. who teaches it, you may have uh, 20,000 people who yes. sign up and take the course. Right. So it's, it was a great, it is a great experiment that's underway and we're learning a lot from it. But the reality is that people sign up and don't, they either never log in or they never complete mm -hmm. the, what they intended to do. At the Jack Welch Management Institute, our goal is to make sure everybody who wants to actually completes the program. The other thing is that I think MOOCs have been a great way to immortalize star faculty, but I don't know what they've really done yeah. to, um, to move the needle for educating the masses. Because you don't get a grades, employer, employers don't look at them as a, as a real, um, it's something that you've actually completed at the end of it. So you're not going to get credit in the real workforce. Until you get that, I think it's a problem to try and lean on these things anymore. You know, one thing that fancy MBA schools provide is they provide a dignified way for a student to go back and get an MBA and change jobs. Right. We don't want that. We want our employees, they're all employed. Our goal is to educate them as to how to do their job better and to grow in their existing company. And that's what's happening. They're getting promoted. They're getting raises. Well, Andrea, you can tell it better than I can. But I yeah. mean, it, it's just an incredible story. Of we we are not a transition zone. Mm -hmm. Harvard, Stanford, etc. You go, you, you go, you go there, and years. you never go back to your old job. Mm -hmm. right. You get a dignified way to move to another oh, company. Yeah. Is there anything that's done in these, uh, like at a Harvard MBA, where they're, you're with all your students, with your peers working on some project, and you're interacting in some social way which gives you management skills to handle mm -hmm. people? Is there anything that, that you can't do like that? Yeah, I mean, we, our students have access to tools that allow them to do that when they're all across the globe because our students are traveling everywhere. So they do it, but they just do it using technology instead of doing it face to face. Yeah. Those are provided to them. I remember Carl did a, remember Carl's piece on, and I, I just don't, I don't, I never, I don't have an MBA, I don't even know what, what you, it seems to me you could impart management principles, especially from you, and, and it wouldn't necessarily, wouldn't have to be in a discrete location, so I don't even, I don't even understand that, right? Well, it has been a, a truism that you go to a bar after class and sit around yeah. and talk about the case. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I, uh, we have working adults with children and everything else, and yeah. they're going back to their job and practicing. You might tell them about the blackboards on Friday, mm -hmm. you know, Monday, Tuesday, Friday. Yeah, so we do actually collect from our students. It's not just lip service, but collect the stories. It's called Lessons from the Field, about how they're applying the, the learning and what they're realizing mm -hmm. in their workplaces. We're getting tons of stories from our students. This is affecting me immediately. Mm -hmm. that, that's really different in this space, mm -hmm. really different. That's great. Yeah. Andrea, I want to thank you very much thank for you. joining us today. Thanks. Mm -hmm.